we just wanted to share um, a project that the Breastfeeding Coalition that um, Newman Hospital participates in and us as um, Flint Hills Community um, Health Center participate in. It's been a long-standing coalition, and this is a project that they put together. It's a prenatal program called Becoming a Mom. It's a March of Dimes curriculum. I'm going to let Heather Elward, she's the director of Women's Life Center and the Periop at Newman Regional Health, and um, we partnered with them to present this program as a community prenatal care program. So I'm going to let Heather start. Cool. First of all, we're really excited to have this program here in Victoria. Um, currently, our prenatal, the only prenatal program that we offer has very poor attendance, and as we know, we can't. Um, I mean, the more educated people become aware of their child, the better the um, outcomes are. So the Becoming a Mom, first of all, is an incentive-based program. They receive financial incentives, and those have been shown to improve patient compliance with health care treatment. Um, it's an evidence-based program, so all that material that we're teaching comes from the March of Dimes. Um, and then they use a common evaluation system, which means we kind of take a, like, we don't really call it a test, but it's a, we'll take a pre-test before the class, and then after their six sessions, we'll take another test. So they'll, we'll send that all up to WSU, and they'll do an evaluation to see how our, if we are actually teaching the program correctly, and that people are understanding it and getting information out of it. And then, like she said, this is a community collaboration between um, physician offices, the hospital, and the health center here. It's, everyone working together. I mean, the physician offices are enrolling them, WIC is enrolling patients, m &I. It's everyone working together to um, get the word out there and get these patients where they need to be. Why this is so important is what we found in our group is um, basically because of infant mortality. Here in Lyon County, you can see our infant mortality rate is 9.4%. In Kansas, the average is 6.3%. Um, infant mortality is that death of a baby any time before his first birth, his or her first birthday. Anytime you have to stand there with a parent that's been through that, it's pretty emotional. Um, and as you can see, we really need to work on getting that down. I think it's pretty unacceptable to all of us um, in the healthcare field that we have such a high rate. Some of those causes that we found um, can be due to smoking, alcohol, drug use, low birth weight, or premature labor. So by including that in this education, hopefully we can you know, change their behaviors while they're pregnant. This is just talking about, this was last year, that um, March 9th, KDHG, and ASHO set to reduce the goal of premature births by the end by 8% to the end of 2014. And this was just some cost. You know, premature birth before 37 weeks cost the US $26, 26 billion annually. So anything we can do educating these patients about things they're doing, behaviors, will hopefully help reduce costs also as a system. Some of the curriculum goals of the program are to um, teach women accurately and timely information about prenatal care and having a healthy pregnancy. So this isn't taking away from their doctor's appointment. We want to make sure they're still going to those prenatal appointments and attending the class. And then creating that supportive environment that promotes healthy behaviors, help participants overcome barriers to care and become assertive and informed consumers of prenatal services, to really promote interaction between facilitators and participants. Um, we're having it in a group setting. Um, just have some tables out. It's not going to be like a lecture. It's going to be everyone participating, hopefully. Um, and then to evaluate and produce a positive knowledge base and behavioral change in participants, and of course to improve our birth outcomes here in Lyon County. And then these are just some of the things that are looking at that just improved prenatal care may not be enough. They really need education to change their lifestyle. So by going to the doctor and them saying smoking is bad really isn't going to help them change that. They need more education to actually change their lifestyle, not just someone telling them not to do something. And then these are just kind of some joint commission measures that they're looked at, and hopefully we can help um, reduce, you know, elective deliveries, cesarean section, um, and help increase our exclusive breastfeeding rate. Those would be the highlighted ones, would be some of our goals for the program also. And then ways that March of Dimes saves us money as a community is by decreasing that number of preterm births, um, decreasing the number of special care infants, decreasing the number of elective induction. Um, in Lyon County right now, we have almost 49% of our patients come in and choose to be induced electively. Um, and I think that a lot is due to education. They, we are not inducing before 39 weeks, but still, just because you're 39 weeks does not mean you're necessarily ready to have your baby. And they end up with a lot higher C-section rate. So we really want to educate them that just because you're 39 weeks and the doctor says you can be, have an induction, that's not necessarily best for everyone. What did you and tell me the percentage was? Right now we're at like about 49% of our patients come in to be. Uh, electively induced? 
at 39 weeks. So at least we've at least reached that goal. <laughs> We're not doing any inductions before 39 weeks selectively, but the majority of our patients feel that since that's okay to do. So, you know, we just want to inform them that you don't have to. If your cervix isn't ready, and it, it does say that on our consent form, that if your cervix, you know, is not soft and things like that, that you'll, you have a 40% higher chance of having a C-section. So we are informing them that at that point, but that's too late, really. They're already here. They want to be induced. So hopefully by teaching them all these things ahead of time, that will kind of decrease. One good fact I have since I did this PowerPoint is in Blaine County, their infant mortality rate was in 2006 to 2010 was 8.5%. They've had this program in place for three years and their last, from 2008 to 2012 statistics, it's actually went down to 6.4% their infant mortality. And of course, it's not enough data to show that this program did that, but the fact that that program's been there for three years and they've um, seen such a decrease in such a short amount of time is really giving Mark to them some great data to go run nationwide with this program. And then this is just talking about the Kansas Perinatal Quality Collaborative, which is a statewide program, and their mission is to improve maternal and infant health. And so some other QI projects are breastfeeding first trimester, and this program, March Times program, ties to all those state initiatives that are going on. Um, and then I thought this was um, just a quote I found, that if 90% of all babies were exclusive of breastfed for the first six months of life, we could save $13 billion in healthcare and other costs and save nearly 1,000 lives, mostly infants, each year across the United States. So really this program, we're hoping to tie in that breastfeeding, you know, um, encouraging, give them the support they need, um, just being there as peer support. And really that's what we want this to be is for them to form relationships with other moms who are going through this program also. And then here at the health center and at the hospital, we would have support programs for after they have their baby with breastfeeding through WIC and um, some clinics we have at the hospital. So there's support, this will give them that initial support they need and then we already have the support after. So it's just kind of tying it all together. And we have a lot of the same people involved in the program. So I think it'll be good to see those faces throughout. So. And I did pass out the little flyers about the program, but basically it's a, it'll be every Tuesday night and it's a six session. We have like six different classes through the year and then there's six sessions for each class, which um, they're listed out in there. So there's one just on healthy mom, one on feeding your baby, taking care of your baby afterwards. And we have lots of um, support through the community coming in to be guest speakers. And I think it'll be a fun program. And the incentive piece is also listed in there. Um, for attending four classes, for example, they get a package of, a big package of diapers. And then if they attend all the classes, there's, the gifts are listed on there. So it's, I mean, it's getting them there by providing something to them. So, and the March of Dimes has funded that piece of it for us at this point. Um, and then the health center and the hospital have been awesome because they're providing the support staff to teach and run the program. So that's a great, I mean, that's a huge money spent on um, staff. So. We appreciate their support with that. And I know that SIDS education was a part of that. It is. Back in the beginning. What, what's yes. the status of SIDS today? Is it on the rise, on the decline? I, I honestly don't have that information in front of me, but I would, I would say it's slightly on the decline. But I think, um, obviously, we can always encourage that. But I, I mean, and that's why we're hoping that by getting this information out to those physician offices, because once they take that baby home, I mean. Because we do, you know, a little bit of training in the hospital, but that's not enough to, they already have their sleep environment set up at home. So we're hoping the program will help too. And we actually have a um, volunteer speaker that had um, lost a child to SIDS that will be coming to present at that session. So I think that'll be great to hear, I mean, a first-hand experience from someone. So. We actually have 36 signed up already for the whole year. And that's, um, so we're a little excited. So we're hoping we've um, actually received three thousand dollars from the March of Dimes to get the program going, and then we're still waiting on the rest of the funding. With their January board meeting, we'll know whether we got um, a larger portion to keep going. So I'm hoping we did. Otherwise, I don't, we may not have all those incentives, but we at least have the program up and starting in January our first class. There's lots. I mean, there's definitely lots of education we can still be doing. So we're hoping get this on the ground and then keep going. This portion came through our breastfeeding coalition, so we're really trying to get out there and go to businesses and get those signs in the window, you know, that you can feed your baby here and all kinds of stuff. So. I think you're going to be commended for the program. Thank you. Thank you for the present. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening to me. Yes. And uh, wishing you great success. Yeah. Thanks.